Right then. I wish I'd checked my laptop wasn't in there actually. I am, um, I'm trying to keep out of trouble in this quarantine period. And largely, for me, staying out of trouble means not spending money on stupid things. I'm doing all right, I think, in the main. A couple of nights ago though, I found myself on Amazon. It's quite late and I, uh, I came across a camera bag. A cheap camera bag, but a camera bag that I didn't need in any way. Here it is. It was 18 pounds. Um, yeah, I don't need it. I've got no idea why I bought it, to be honest, other than boredom, which is ridiculous. But since I've got it, what I thought I'd do is compare this, an £18 bag, to uh, my actual camera bag that I use pretty much all the time, all around the world, which is this, my um, Mindshift backlight, which is a £230 bag. So this costs under 8% of what this costs. Do another bit of maths. You could buy 12.7 of these for the same price as one of these. I mean, you could probably get this one for much cheaper. This is covered in dirt and it's disgusting, but still probably more expensive than a brand new one of these. Now, the reason I thought I'd make a video about this is twofold. Number one, I'm sick to death of Lightroom tutorials. I reckon there's been about 3 million Lightroom tutorials posted on YouTube in the last week. I don't particularly want to add to that at the moment. But the second reason I want to do a video about this is that photography, as most of you will know, is a very expensive endeavour. Cameras cost hundreds if not thousands, lenses are the same, tripods even can be the same, trips to go and take photos are certainly the same, even lights. Most stuff that you need for photography is very, very expensive. However, the thing that I hear most moans about when it comes to the finances of taking photos is the cost of camera bags. People do not like spending lots of money on camera bags. And so I thought I'd explore this by comparing a very cheap one and one that is quite expensive. Now I must admit, I kind of get this because ultimately a camera bag, its only job is to, um, well, to, to carry your camera gear, isn't it? Except I don't think that's really true because if it was, well, we could just use supermarket bags for life to, um, to carry our gear in. Ooh. Mini eggs. Do you have those in other countries? Mini eggs? I'm assuming you do. They're amazing. Mm. Um, similar theme, you could also use a bin liner if you wanted to. This one's green because it's, uh, it's biodegradable as part of Emily's war on plastic. As a result, it's also half the strength of a normal bin bag, so this probably isn't a good idea. So anyway, there's a number of reasons that we don't use uh, bin liners and bags for life as camera bags. And I thought I'd use those reasons to explore the differences between the expensive and cheap ones. I'm pointing that way because I've put them down there, obviously. Right, camera bags typically are made of better materials than Bags for Life or bin liners. And uh, this cheap camera bag is certainly no exception. You know, it's better quality than what you find on a biodegradable bin bag. However, this bag, just kind of spending a little bit of time with it, it kind of reminds me of those conferences that you go to when the highlight of the day is that you get to pick up 86 branded stress balls. You know the sort where you just get given just loads and loads of stuff that you don't need that's super cheap and you end up with 306 biros. That's what this bag reminds me of. It's kind of like the bag that you get given for free when you join a gym. I've not joined many gyms in my time, but from what people tell me, this is kind of thing you'd expect to get when you join a gym. Maybe not with um, inserts for camera stuff. Um, so yeah, it's got a few pockets. It's got, as I said, inserts. It's got some of these pockets on the outside. There's no chest strap or waist strap, uh, but it does have straps for tripods and things. These inside plastics here remind me of school book bags. The question is though, does any of that matter? I mean, could this feasibly carry camera gear? Yes. And given that it's under 8% of the cost of my camera bag, I think this bag demonstrates definitely more than 8% in terms of usability that my camera bag demonstrates. Now, any good camera bag worth its salt needs to be able to protect your gear, obviously one of the main reasons that we don't use bin liners for our camera bags. So, I'm not willing to use my camera stuff for this test. What I thought I'd use instead 
is Easter eggs, given the time of year. There's plenty around. Emily bought loads of them. So, I'll just put one of these in the, uh, well, I guess you put a lens there usually, and uh, I'm gonna throw it around in my garden a bit. Obviously, I'll do the same for my actual camera bag. It's got in a lens one as well. Actually, that might be at a disadvantage. It's on the outside. Well, who am I kidding? This does not matter. Right, now, if I was a betting man, I would probably bet that this will be considered the most pointless test in the world. Right then. Okay, for what it's worth, I think this Easter egg will have fed quite well, because, I mean, look how much padding is on the back of this. We shall see. Oh dear. Okay, well that's not done very well. In which case, I expect this to just be dust. We've got a whole half and then the other half is cracked, which is actually better than that. Well, that's not gone to plan. I think I might need to think of another protection test. So my biggest pet peeve with camera bags, camera bags like this that are sort of front loading or back loading is, um, well actually, front loading. Regardless of whether they're cheap or expensive. So this bag opens from the front. A couple of problems with this. It means that when you put your camera bag on the floor to get something out of it, you have to put it down that way. So anything that has contact with your body, i.e. your back, is gonna get covered in snow, sand, dirt, mud, rocks. And this is not a problem that's just associated with cheap camera bags. I've seen expensive camera bags that open from the front. It makes absolutely no sense from a standpoint of usability or security. Someone could just walk up, unzip your bag and run away with all your gear. Doesn't make any sense to me. My camera bag, and indeed most like this, open at the back like so, which means that when you take them off, you put them down on their front, as you can probably tell, this one is covered in mud. And uh, the back stays free of all the other stuff that I just mentioned. Uh, additionally, since this one, my actual camera bag, has a waist strap, it means that I can keep this waist strap on me and I can spin the bag around, open it up, and change my lenses on the fly without actually having to put the bag down. I think also this did come with a string, this bag, but I've, I've since lost it. You put the string around your neck and then this bit doesn't flop around too much, but um, yeah, as I say, that, that was probably gone in the first week or so. And I mean, again, I don't wanna to get too bag specific. I mean, I'm talking about actual features of these two specific camera bags. The point of this video is to talk about cheap versus expensive. But the point is, when you buy a more expensive bag, you get better materials, but you also get more thought going into the product and uh, engineering, I guess, which is an important thing to think about. Who, uh, who remembers the first time I weatherproof tested a camera bag on this channel? Some years ago now, but uh, it'd be rude not to repeat it, I think, wouldn't it? Although first I will put the cover on it. I mean, it came with the bag, so I might as well use it. <laughs> Completely dry. Full marks. I mean, I'm tempted, but it's so clearly not waterproof that it seems a bit pointless, particularly because it will ruin this bag. I mean, I know it's only water, but I'd probably quite like to send this back since I'm not gonna use it. I shouldn't. Um, these zips, I'll be honest with you, are not gonna butter any parsnips. They feel like they're on borrowed time, to be honest. And actually, I wanna paint you a picture. Imagine you're up a mountain, say. You're up for a sunset, you've got the best picture you've ever got of a sunset, and now you've gotta make your way down from the mountain to uh, go back to your car. At that exact point, this zip <laughs> breaks. And so now you have gotta walk down the mountain with the fear that this could happen at any point, and all your gear just down the mountain. Also, let me paint you another picture. You are in a desert 
and one of your straps breaks, which means that you've now got to carry all of your camera gear in 40 degree heat on one shoulder strap, which could also break at any point. Now, most things break eventually. Thing is, I have absolutely no doubt that the stuff on this bag will break before the stuff on my actual camera bag. And for a lot of people, that will not be a problem at all, because like I said, you can still buy 11 more of these and still have money in your pocket instead of buying the other one. And so for me, the fact that this will break is not necessarily a concern. What is a concern for me is when it will break. And if you ever find yourself in exposed places or places that you could be compromised with all your photography gear, do you really want to be taking the risk of things breaking and, um, well, you having to scoop up all your gear because it's all fallen down the mountain? I should just say that you could use gaffer tape to fix this problem if it happened. You just gaffer tape it up. Not the most usable solution, and it might actually not work for the strap problem, but gaffer tape is pretty much as important, certainly to professional photographers, as cameras. I always carry gaffer tape because it comes in handy for fixing lights and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, if you're never in exposed places like mountains or the Arctic or deserts or whatever, this might not matter to you, but to me, it definitely does, because there are certain places that I go to where I wouldn't want zips to break, for example. I've just remembered, interestingly, that the last time I was sat on my sofa to, to make a video, it was also about camera bags. <clears throat> That's not interesting in any way, is it? I am going mad. Um, to summarize, like everything you buy, there comes a point of diminishing returns. For example, our business class seats twice as good as economy seats, given that they get you to exactly the same place in exactly the same amount of time and they cost twice as much. Is a BMW twice as good as a Ford, given that it might get you from A to B only slightly quicker and in slightly more comfort? The more pounds, dollars, euros, whatever currency it is, the more of those you spend on something, the less you get for each of them. And I would suggest that, as I mentioned before, even though this bag costs about 7% of my actual camera bag, I think it's probably 40, 50% as useful. Which means that for people who think that this is enough for them and their needs, you end up with an absolute bargain. For people like me who think they need more than this, I end up having to pay over 92% more for a product that's only 50% as good. Ugh. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that useful. Just a few announcements before you go. Uh, I am going to Patagonia next April with Greg to run a workshop. Uh, there are details below and the link is to Brendan's website because he's put it together. So that's why it's all booked through Brendan's website. If you fancy coming, you can book on now. I know it's a bit of a weird time to think about travel and stuff and uh, workshops, things like that. So if you book on, uh, your deposits are fully refundable in case you change your mind or something comes up, whatever. So um, we'll see what happens, but that's the plan, to go to Patagonia. If you fancy it, details in the description. Uh, next bit of housekeeping, the book. People have been asking me if they buy the 2018 book and this one, the 2019 book, will they be shipped at the same time? And the answer is if you buy them in the same order, yes, they will be shipped at the same time, which is hopefully in a couple of weeks. And finally, speaking of um, Patagonia in South America, my friend has written a book all about his travels in South America. It's awesome. I'll put a link in the description to that as well in case you're uh, looking for something to read in this self-isolation quarantine thing. I should probably do more reading as opposed to shopping on Amazon. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you're well. If you've got any other suggestions of things I could waste my money on on Amazon, they'd be much appreciated. See you soon. Also, do I look like a newsreader here? A really unprofessional newsreader. Look at me. <laughs> Have you ever seen a newsreader with a beard like this? Probably not.